Welcome to Vintagata Wednesdays. Today we are attacking one of the most mentally challenging sub-assemblies, the programming plates. And here you can see an evolution first version where we still had the round programming pins with fewer holes. Second generation, a test run. And right now we are on this beast here. So today we are going to test this and troubleshoot it because I already sensed there are some issues with it that we have to tweak. But before going into that, I wanted to talk a little bit about the whole Marble Machine X project actually. And I'm thinking about why does it take so long time? And I think the reason why this is taking so long time is a combination of complexity, perfectionism and procrastination. So the complexity, now when I work with real engineers and I show them each little subassembly and I tell them what it needs to do, they're all like, okay Martin, now we get it. Now we get why you didn't finish this faster because the machine is really, really complex. And the complexity is increasing due to the perfectionism. For example, this uh, conveyor belt here. This is not the easiest way. This is not the easiest way to lift marbles, but in the marble machine culture, lifting marbles is like a game. It's like uh, that's what you want to impress people with how you're lifting the marbles. That's the art form basically. So that's why I incorporated so many different lifting methods and that's where my perfectionism leads to increased complexity. Last but not least procrastination. Like this project is so daunting that I just try to constantly escape from it and I go to some minor detail that I can mentally handle but it's not the real bottleneck and today that's why I wanted to talk about this these programming plates if I can't get this right the music will not be tight today I'm gonna stop procrastinate the most important part the brains of the Marble Machine X I've been just working in this room and I see the seasons pass now it's winter again I can't believe it <sighs> But anyway, me and Wilson are together going to attack this once and for all. Slay this dragon. And I just want to repeat how many programming holes we are working with here. We have 16 bars times 4 beats. That's 64 holes. Offbeat row, which adds another 64 holes. And the triplet row. So we have 192 holes per channel. This is one channel. 38 channels. We need four of these quarter sections to form a full circle to play one song, but we need another set of four of these sections to have them to be reprogrammed during a live performance so we can change song quickly. And that's why these are detachable from the Marble Machine X. We have a total of 58,368 holes. For example, there's a lot of suggestion to use something in a pan like this. Great idea, but try to fit in 58,000 mechanical parts into something. It's not practical. That's why I really believe in the system of the magnets and the CNC board because we have a lot of functionality. So we can play waltz tempo and we can play triplet songs. And here we arrive at the real problem because we need the measurement between each programming pin to be perfect. And internally, that's no problem. But when we come down here to the end, there's gonna come another section joining. I need the distance between a programming pin on the edge of this board and a programming pin on the edge of the next board to be equally precise as the distance internally on this plate. <laughs> On the older version, the plastic was supposed to end up flush with the plywood on all edges, which meant that I had to assemble these plastic sheets perfectly on the plywood thing. On the new one, we've reduced the size of the plywood structure. So the plastic is sticking out almost three millimeters on each side, which means that this part will register on the CNC edge of the plastic. So the whole plywood structure will float and the whole part will adjust itself after these two edges which is in perfect relationship to the programming holes. That's not going anywhere. So I'm just gonna make a very, very careful mark here. And then I'm going to move this plate over here and see how it lines up. so difficult to calculate what happens when the material is distorted. This is why I need to do a little bit of trial and error. I've done this a lot, but this is the most serious one so far. This is our pencil line from the previous part. And when I push this plate in place, it ends up there, which is very interesting. I'm gonna check the second place. So 
this one is a tad short and the other one was a tad long which should be a good sign the reason why this scares me so much is that i've been trying to avoid making four of these plates because they're so time consuming to produce before I got the length perfect. You might think I should be able to know the length in the computer, but as I said, when this material distorts, strange things happening with it. This is tricky, 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 tricky. I think I just got an ID because if you see this last hole here, there's like a little groove there, and this is for the last 32. And my ID was that the next plate is gonna form the other part of the hole, but that, it's perfectionism. <laughs> I can just make music without these last 32s uh, every 30 second uh, bar. But we machine this edge slightly shorter. We remove a millimeter. Then we can put them on and if we're missing, we can just shim this width by adding material like, like so. If I let go a little bit of the perfectionism to include these last 32 offbeat holes, then I can reduce the complexity. I made these holes too tight. I need to cut these holes a little bit bigger. And also these, you can see here, we made a screw hole where there's another screw underneath. So I'm gonna make new positions for all these screw holes. So after a lot of testing, I narrowed down to 14 programming plate tweaks and I started with the plywood parts and I started to alter the CAD. Most of the work on the Marble Machine X is actually happening inside CAD. So I made one of the four sections to registrate on a certain spot of the programming wheel, the other three are floating, and once I was done with the 14 tweaks, I could move over to start to cut the plywood parts. This build consists of three separate parts, the plywood, the metal sheet, and the PE300 machined plastics. And now the plywood parts are done, so we can move over to the second part of the build, the metal sheets. These sheets were laser cut to size for us, so it's super nice, except we gave them the wrong size. <laughs> so these sheets are too long and the holes are in the wrong positions. It was actually not me this time. I'm normally the one who screws things up so for me that's very nice for a change anyway there's some extra features i'm gonna machine this sheet so by using this smooth surfaced waste board the material is backed at all spots it gives a better cut load my g code we need to be sure that the cnc machine knows exactly where this piece is so i'm gonna first of all cut some holes here that we can use to align the sheet with. Now the CNC machine knows exactly where this metal sheet is. So this went perfect. This means we can load the third and last program.
So it didn't cut all the way through, which means that I need to run the same tool path again, but with a lower C value. So what you saw me doing there, that I had to manually keep the thing down in the edges because I had really no good way of holding it down along the edges since I was going to machine the edges. This looks spot on. Plywood sections are ready, metal sheets are ready, and I could move on to start machining the tapered programming pinholes. This machining was so complicated, so that is going to be a part two on this video series. A series inside the series. The programming sheets is the brains of the Marmachine X. It's crucial that these are spot on. I would highly recommend that you go back and look at the Magnet MIDI Music System video where I'm explaining the use of the triplets to be able to play waltz tempo for an even loop on the programming wheel. That is actually quite genius <laughs> and it's a nice video and it's from a time while I was procrastinating building the Marble Machine X by doing very serious video edits. <laughs> so this is a really long project and that's why it's resulting in several videos on this same very important topic. Looking forward to continue this journey on the next Wintergatan Wednesdays. Thank you so much for watching, see you then.